sometimes can be a struggle, especially since I'm just starting out after a really long break. That extra little validation, like just being wanted by someone, that shit kind of like helps out. But it has made me aware of something that other things in my life have also ended up making me aware of. And that's kind of what I want to talk about in this video today. Basically, I guess the concept of this is more or less going to be, why are gay people so happy to adopt every single bad thing from toxic monogamy, toxic hetero monogamy culture. I just don't really know if I believe in all that stuff. What, stuff, anniversaries? And stuff that society tells us to want just because straight people do. Like one of the best things about being gay is that we don't have to conform to that heteronormative rom-com bullshit that is dreamt up by corporations to help sell green cards to morons. It's like a sad moment in life when I start agreeing with Derek off Love Victor, but his whole rant about accepting all of the heteronormative elements of relationships, well, it was shitty the context he was talking about because anniversaries are great and loving them and things like that are fun. And, you know, liking them doesn't make you lesser or any of that. He is right in ways that he totally did not address at all. Cause we gay people definitely adopt a lot from straight culture in regard to relationships and the standards with them and all that. And sadly, a lot of that shit that we end up adopting is really, really bad and unhealthy. Possessiveness, jealousy, this sort of inferred ownership of a person, all this crap. It's not good. And of course, with all that ownership, jealousy, and all of that weird sort of treating your partner as an object instead of as an equal that you're in a mutual relationship with, comes a lot of other really shitty, toxic elements that are just the worst and things that we need to get rid of in society as a whole, especially things that have no purpose whatsoever in gay culture. I've got this friend. He has an OnlyFans. He, for the most part, I think enjoys making it, but he did it exactly like started for the quote unquote right reasons. He didn't start it because he like genuinely wanted to get into the sex industry. He didn't start it because he genuinely enjoyed sex work. It was, you know, a good, easy way to raise money, especially in COVID. He recently had a thing where he went out just to have a quiet night and someone who happened to be a subscriber 
decided to turn the whole night into getting him to like, you know, confess about having an only fans, confess about all this, so they could shave him. And then, after shaving him, they decide to go in private and be like, hey, it'd be hot to be with a porn star. And this is precisely the sort of toxic bullcrap that is out there. That's not to say that like every single guy should be supportive of sex work or into sex work. To shame someone for doing sex work, to treat them as lesser, to mark them as sort of shameful and someone to be made fun of, and then to like go after them in private on the down low because like, oh, that's kind of hot and keep like, I don't want to associate with you, I don't want to be around you, but hey dude, I'll screw you, I'll suck your dick. That's bull crap. And exactly the same type of objectification and negative attitude towards sex that straight people have basically invented and proliferated throughout so much of their culture. Think about it. Everyone wants to shame the sexual woman. Everyone wants to shame the girl who's had more than one partner. Everyone wants to go after that and say it's less and shameful, it's disgusting. But at the same time, when those guys want their dick sucked, when those guys want to have a fun experience, guess who they're going to be calling up first? That one. And that is the crux of the problem. Male culture in a straight society is built upon sex being a power move, sex being an objective it being a trophy hunt in the worst kind of way. And of course, the problem with this attitude towards sex is just that it breeds so much extra crap. And it comes back to Grindr in the end, cause this attitude of obligation and almost like being owed sex for the most minimal of reasons just permeates gay culture in this. And I've already said before, I'm not a big fan of this whole anti-hookup culture thing, because I genuinely do feel like there are benefits to, you know, openly and honestly looking for sex before or instead of any sort of deeper relationship. Toxic assholes who do shitty things just because they want sex are the problem. They're the ones who make this a big issue. And the reason we should be way more upset about the crap that men do. One of the best lessons to take away from everything is that we as gay people have a chance to redefine relationships. We have a chance to redefine the status quo, unlike anyone else before. Even beyond what just like a hetero poly couple could do. Couple. <laughs> Our quest for normalcy, our quest for acceptance within the society that we have built so far, just seems to be pushing more gay men into toxic, narrow paths where they end up doing more harm to themselves, more harm to their partners, and no good for anyone. Why do we keep perpetuating this? Why do we keep pushing this out as a healthy norm, as an acceptable way to be, as the thing we should be striving towards to be good, acceptable society gays. Isn't that the kind of shit that died out in the Willie Grace era when everyone had to be straight passing and straight acting to be accepted? We should be over that shit. Age dichotomies. Not saying that age variance is always an issue. Like, Honestly, like as someone who came out really late and who was like socially isolated for a really long time, I usually end up like falling for guys who are a bit younger than me. Okay, sometimes more than a bit. 21, 22, or around there. <laughs> but it's like an experience thing. Like with all of the isolation and issues I have like gone through, I end up finding that out gay like 21, 22 year olds are closer to my level of experience than say someone 29, 30, who usually is already past that stage as a gay person and you have gay guys who take that age thing in the same sort of way that a lot of straight couples do where it again becomes like a power trip. 
the idea that you're older and wiser somehow gives you like more say over the relationship than the younger person. You'll see a lot of older guys like with girls fresh out of high school, got them pregnant, got them locked down with a kid, and oh yeah, it's a totally healthy relationship based on being, you know, mutually respectable equals and yeah. Like a certain someone that I'm not going to specifically refer to uh, that I work with once said to me that uh, one of our 16 year old co workers was the hottest guy at work he had ever seen, and if he wasn't in a relationship, he would totally be trying to get with him. Which would sound cool if the guy was like 16, 17, maybe 18 in a stretch, but. He was like 25, 26 when he said this. That's a problem. In a lot of ways. And even this relationship that he is in, uh, the guy he's in that relationship with is like, was like 18 when they met? Like barely out of the graduation gown at that. And he whisked him off across state lines to a place where he had no friends, no ties, no connections and basically put him into a situation where he could control everyone he socialized with, everyone he knew, everyone he got to meet. <clears throat> Did the whole, we shouldn't have other gay friends in our relationship type thing. Did the whole, you know, we should like limit ourselves on social media type thing. Basically, everything that these guys did, now that I'm looking at it, was so textbook abusive, dominating relationship. And again, straight out of the hetero hat book for how these things happen. You know, the woman always gets pushed off of social media, always gets pushed into like a little ownership circle where only he knows her. And if she does get to socialize, it's under his control. Like, there is always that trope of like, oh, you have a joint account. Which one you cheated? The other side of that is, oh, you have a joint account. Which of you is the manipulative, emotionally manipulative abuser? age variance is it just you know oh he's a more mature soul oh you know we still just connected you know we have a lot of things in common or yeah we're not exactly in common but we are in other ways it's not always just a healthy age difference sometimes it is literally just a power move and literally something that is built upon someone wanting to own the person wanting to be in control wanting to have more than just, again, a mutual meeting of minds, which is what relationships should be. They want to turn into something bigger, something worse, something disgusting. And it's shitty. And I don't want to say that monogamy is to blame, I don't want to say that all of hetero society is to blame, but there are definitely problems with men out there. There's definitely problems in our gay community. But I think we want to look at where these things actually come from as opposed to just say, I hate, you know, hookup culture, I hate, you know, gay culture, I hate tweet culture. I feel like all the times people do that, they are putting the blame somewhere wrong because they don't really want to admit that these problems, these issues are far more ingrained and far more intrinsically evil and disgusting than we'd ever really be comfortable with it. If you admit that the problems that are actually ruining gay relationships, gay dating, the culture, the way we interact as people looking for relationships of whatever kind, you have to admit that the actual problem there is something so deeply rooted in us as a society and how we were raised and how we were taught to look at relationships. That's really, really huge and really, really hard to change in any significant way. So no wonder we avoid that. No wonder we run away from that because it's so much easier to just delete it out. We gotta do better, people. Uh, the only way we're going to do better is by acknowledging uncomfortable truths, such as the fact that a lot of the stuff that makes relationships so hard, so prone to failure, so awful, 
is that we are trying to correlate equality and you know, self-value with relationship values that are inherently rooted in the opposite of those who are modern values. Something has to go. If you enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. And of course, for my whole life, hope it gets better as long as you can with my book. See you guys in the next video. And say goodbye to my nipple.